25 years of Vampire the Masquerade presents The Phoenix Crusade. Hey folks, Brennan here. Thanks for tuning in to our 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade podcast. If you want to reach out or follow us, we're on Facebook and YouTube as 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch as 25 years of VTM, and on our website at 25yearsofvtm.com. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Surely record me one-sided shit matter, sneezes included, and I will get that going because that's the humor part we're still not up and going yet. Good. As she's doing it, we're going to see what goes on with it. And we'll try to have two here and we'll kick it to brunch on. If it doesn't work, I need more training with this. So yeah. that's just it. We're identifying it as we go along. So... We're going to get to it. Um, we last left off with Senor Rot deciding he was going to go um, do a nefarious investigation. For instance, um, the last thing you remember is what? Last thing I remember was the Coterie was together, and uh, they went off and investigated the Ballard situation, if I recall correctly. So, correct, right? They had, they had business to tend to. They went to go tend said business, and they went to go see what it is. Um, now, why I say it that way and that vaguely, you were focused on other things. There was something they needed to know. Now, you knew that uh, a matter of that uh, was going to be resolved for the venture was being taken in hand um, by Sully, right? He was, he was gone. He was going to handle it. Yeah. So off he went, and that's sort of the lot he took. However... Mysteriously, I have an alarm clock go off, and I don't even know what it was. I just ended it. I'm sorry. Apologies. Um, that's a surprise. You had stuff, and no one knows what that is. So uh, to get back on track. Um, so he took off, managed his own P's and Q's with that, meaning he kind of left you to your own thing. But on the reversed half, you still had the others, and what were they going to do? And from what you understand, um, they got up to, well... No good. No one sent you messages. No one left you anything. What's going on? Other than the trust that you were going to get the important lifting done. And the important lifting for me, just to tell everybody here. Yeah, I'm sorry. These. Sorry. All right. Let's try it again. Um, so. <laughs> get back full circle. Um, basically, what you had going on is that you had. Um, Ramsey, you had uh, Warren, they were basically taking off to back up Sullivan, but you come to understand that even with you leaving, Sullivan pretty much was distracted and distanced and had something of his own to handle. They didn't even fully come up to have that said meeting, leaving them to their own devices. So Slappy, Warren, go go handle their own business with Ramsey, and you haven't heard from them, right? Um, but that's inconsequential to the moment. I'm just letting you know. All three, of, all three of your groups went to do something different. You're on your own. Sullivan was on his own. The other three went and did their own thing together, though. So why am I letting you, the player, know to let you know that there is clearly some things that have happened and where you fit in in this element is strictly up to you. But you went off to try the first thing in, on your agenda, which was what? For Rot. Um, when we originally started, it was to go... Find um, Ramsey's friend, who was last seen in Millennium Park, uh, and he does. He just saw a lot of trees. He did not remember. He could not, not get any sense of direction. So, in that regard, you're gonna go search a park looking for a guy who you don't really know, other than look at some trees, right? So you're playing right. rot. You're this. You're this veteran, homeless veteran, um, who knows the streets. You were out on them. You survived on them. What is it you're expecting to? uncover here as far as rot and what i mean by that is i'm checking to see if the player has a mindset like a method of you checking like you guys went there if you recall and at the the very least ramsey went there and told you he looked around he asked around he didn't find anything he went to some weird pretzel vendor he met some guy at like demon dogs with some hot dog stand yeah nothing but he gets some phone told there's photos of millennium park the, the whole nine um you're back in Millennium Park. We're not saying Rock doesn't get there. You are standing in pretty much the same place where this epicenter of all the madness started, which was near the Bean. Yeah. It's more than an eyesight, right? You can see that, see the pavilion, see the outdoor um, concert hall, the whole nine. 
And the trees you see aren't aren't really anything. Like you see a sparse ground where, if, if anything, the traffic that's constantly going by, right? Because you're here at night and you're here on a Monday light night for lack of a better term, right? That's about when this yeah. took place anyway. And traffic is normal, which means in Chicago, it's nighttime. People are going places. Tons of people kind of got their own business. You can see that light. It, it's like the light serves to be a moving boundary line that you can see because the trees are still very little. Right, that becomes the boundary for the park itself. So that's how you kind of know um, just the size and scope you're dealing with, right? Um, but then you also know of a certain root path that was here before. Dr. Pigeon, an idea of strange disease dogs that were in the park it looked like. And then there's you. Mm-hmm. What would you like to do? I'd like to go in a direction where I had seen those these looking dogs before towards uh, the bridge in the uh, uh, the river, I believe. Okay. Um, help me out is rot. Like you want to go to this uh, to this place um, to kind of see things and check it out and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But what I'm pressing as a storyteller is that you have an idea of how you're doing this, yeah. right? Currently, you're telling me you're just going to show up walk there, figure out what's going on, mm-hmm. right? So you're going by the seat of your pants. But the yeah. terrain in and of itself is that you have the lake close by that you can see from the park. It's very cold uh, where you're at, even though it's like budding spring, it ain't there yet. And it's a, it's a matter of here, right? So here's a, here's a shot of Millennium Park. You have a nice paved roads that take you through the landscape park. You have the trees that are, that are sparse. This is by no means even a forest. It's more like, uh, what would you call that? In your own words, right? How do you see it? I see it as a park. Like like a standard park, like a man-made park, right? Yes. And that's what it is. Everything's landscaped to showcase what? The city. The lake, the city, the kind of viewpoints that you have in it. And uh, that's it. But there's life here. And you can see that as well. People on bikes, helmeted, kind of riding through, minding their own business. Folks are somewhat bundled up, but they're so starved for being inside in the cold. They're trying to figure out, you know, what's the world outside looking like? You have your fitness aficionados who are wasting no time to get back at it. You have uh, a little pre-planting of certain flowers and whatnot to be there. You even have the old school uh, art exhibit where were the beans there. They're now kind of testing the sprinklers for the uh, outdoor interactive portion of the park where it has this weird face that's really huge and an electronic billboard that will react to people getting in front of it and change accordingly. That's there too. But the way the the shot is, even glancing at it, it's designed to showcase the backdrop of the city. Sort of like a weird automated welcome to the future is what Chicago's kind of trying to push in some odd way. At least it's the feeling you get. Like you're always being watched in the city, but that's Millennium Park. And then in some facets, because the park's sizable, you have an entrance where you get that the the grounds is indeed man-made, but it's sculpted for people to come walk through and join their peace of mind, but more most importantly, enjoy the peace that Chicago has gifted them, which is the point of any mayor, right? This is Mayor Lightfoot's whole dream and agenda is like the things you could see from the park in and of itself, right? And so... You have the city in parts that is heavily nearby, but then you have this interesting lake kind of breaks it up. And then you have this fancy concrete everywhere mixed with enough nature to make it feel like it's almost worth walking through. Right? And what I mean by that, a lot of folks want that whole earthy experience. If I'm going to be in a park, I'm in a park. Some just want to go work out. Right? Have a good time doing it. Others want to enjoy the city and they want something worth seeing as they walk through it. And this is all what Millennium Park gives you the chance to do. It intersects with so much that Chicago is that you get a feel that this is the exact place you want to be when you're a tourist. This is how you feel that, hey, I've been to Chicago and I have seen some stuff. And I have plenty of photos to give it to you. Hmm. So what I'm thinking is... With Ramsey's uh, friend that has gone missing, these clearly, the, the images we're looking at of Millennium Park, it's not a dense force. It's nothing like the description we're hearing from uh, the recording, the, the voicemail of Ramsey's friend. But I do recall, in, 
during our previous encounter with the, or our previous experience with this park that there were some diseased looking dogs that were wandering the area lurking and observing it seemed they seemed much more intelligent than any animal I would ever encounter either they were being a familiar of some kind or something else I'm suspecting that Rock would be suspecting that if they had anything to do with it then following the path that they had taken before when he had followed them before everything hit the fan that would be the ideal uh, path to uh, follow and see if there's any signs of someone of uh, Ramsey's friend or of uh, this small pack of dogs uh, living somewhere nearby. Okay. So your attempt, if I'm hearing you correctly, because you basically told me what I was, you know, I told you we're to combine in info, we're getting all that in together. Rot's idea is to find these diseased dogs? Yes. Okay. To that effect, I want to point something out on your sheet, right, that you have going yeah. on. So first and foremost, you have a strong idea of the, the underground for Chicago itself. And we talked about this, right? This is the nature of how, well, per your concept, uh, how, the, how the homeless do interact and how they serve as an information source. When someone calls the homeless homeless and forget about them, you don't. You're a veteran who also was homeless, and you get that they know all the tight spots for information, things to hear, ear to the ground, um, seeing things that maybe the police would overlook. But are interesting to check out, like something happened over here in this neighborhood or that neighborhood. Someone was talking. Someone, if the streets are talking, someone in this network would hear something. And this becomes the Chicago underground in and of itself. The other part of the underground and why it's called that is that you also know a sizable portion of the homeless during the winter actually go to the sewers. Chicago has massive sewer openings underneath these big skyscrapers. And one of the most famous was near Lower Wacker Drive, which was the Sears Tower. And now I something else tower. I forget what it is now. Willis Tower is what it is now. And um, big vents for heating the whole building that gives off excess heat. Pipes that go through that to get heating. And this is a good way to survive a tough winter. And so they have like a tent city that's down and around there. And people just overlook it. They're out of sight, out of mind. No one cares. That's sort of where you know is a good source to start looking because it's not far from here. Uh, and by, by not far from here, it's not Millennium Park. It's not right there. Several blocks you got to go. But that's a walk and a skip and a jump. And if you recall hearing the story about how the thought of the encounter of Dr. Pigeon was before, that's sort of what folks had to do. They followed some weird, what they said, homeless guy um, through the park who could teach them to speak to pigeons and figure out how to get inside the bean. Do you remember that conversation? Yes. All right. Um, so you're somebody who has experience with that. You know to go right to the spot that he had mentioned that he had to get to, right? And this is Brennan, if you recall. His character, Ramsey. His retelling was basically, yeah, I went here, and that's when stuff went off the rails, but he left it alone. Do you also remember your friends telling you that it might be dangerous, and could you remember why? I remember them saying it was dangerous because they had encountered werewolves that ripped them to shreds. Okay. Here we are with you. And you're in this park, and you're looking at that slant they're talking about. And you see there's a whole business section right across from a makeshift bridge. And let me take that back. It's not makeshift. It's actual concrete kind of bows over in an arch. It's just not very far, right? It's like maybe quarter block. And you're across the thing and you're to the city again, right out of Millennium Park. However, what's underneath is like a mini waterway, right, that they have going on. Um, really hardly noticeable. But you have this massive vent that's opened up that's a steel grate. And you can see that. You can also see there's a couple tents already there taking off some of the heat. And underneath that bridge, you can spot that that's where all the pigeons would be. You can see all the bird poop that's all over the bottom of it, but you can hear the birds. And you, with your animalism, even have an instinct as to where these birds might nest might be. And you can see it off to the left, and indeed, there are the birds above, underneath the bridge, chilling out, where all the heat rises, and they're, they're relaxed there. Across from them, there's this entrance, but there's a couple tents. I think that's where I'm going to start my investigation. 
Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll follow that path, or I'll go into that tunnel. I'm going to begin my uh, investigation going through that. Um, if I haven't, uh, I haven't declared it, but I'd like to be using Unseen Passage this whole time. Sure, and with Unseen Passage, you can get pretty close. You get up over to the tent and realize that that's a nice big gate that's closed, it's shut. Um, your larceny teaches you to look for a lock and how it might be latched, and you can see that you don't think it is. Maybe it does pull up, maybe not, but the tents are tied to it in such a way as to, like, you would notice if somebody came and went. Seems to be part and parcel what it is, but the tents are closed. So what this effect is, is that all that warm wind that you can feel from the tent is coming to kind of buffet the tent, so if someone's inside, they're going to be warm when they sleep. It's kind of a good effect. You can see some bugs that are kind of dancing around at the bottom down here, but not many, right? Because it's still not spring yet, but enough. Um, your fateful beetles, maybe maybe that's a roach. You're not really certain. You're not an entomologist. Um, but there's some life here. More importantly, though, you can tell that there's darkness, obviously, and that's underneath, and you'll be where the buildings are proper, right where you're at. But you don't see anything, and that's due to the darkness. Is there anyone that I can see directly or, or within who would take notice of me if I were to break my concealment and try and get through into this tent? Now, the thing about being hidden is that there's no such thing as you staring and looking for people who are also hidden. And it doesn't make any sense, right? That's, that's not even the ballpark of it. Nobody can see you. So you looking around or looking for someone who might be staring over at this place, happenstance. But let me ask you a question. If an invisible guy explodes and no one's around, who sees it? Get my point? Yes, I do. So if you're hidden to the senses and no one can detect you and no one knows you're there and no one would know if you're standing there even if you, you, you know what I mean? It's like they're not yeah. going to come and wait around to keep watch. They're, they're wherever they would be. But you don't yeah. see them in direct eyesight. On the way over, you didn't see anybody either. Why? The assumption was based off of what you said. You came over here unseen. Yes. So. Yeah. We'll just go on through and uh, see what we can find. All right, so going through, I'm taking to mean that you're going to lift the tent, unzip a tent, climb in, see how it's attached, or at least untether the tents from the grate to try to lift the grate? Right. Okay. When you start messing with the tents, you'll hear from the inside, can I help you, buddy? Sorry, I don't mean to be a bother. I'm just trying to find somewhere warm. Okay. So I told you something real quick. Somebody's there and something, you know, obviously you're, you're visible from your interaction with the tent. And they could tell that because how could they not? And uh, what you hear is some fumbling. You hear, ah, oh, God damn it, everybody looking for some warmth. What makes you think that a tent tied to a great means that you can get warm here? This isn't your tent, pal. What are you, new? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just going to I'll go find somewhere else. Do you, do you know where I can find somewhere warm? Yeah, get the hell out of here. If you're just going to get out of here, get the hell out of here. There's like a mission that's like, go four blocks north and see if Christ can help you because he sure ain't going to help you here. And if I got to get my third pair of pants on to get out here and deal with you, there's going to be a whooping. <laughs> All right. Fine. Fine. And uh, he'll... <laughs> Well, scurry away. <laughs> and you take that, you listen to it, and Rot walks off, right? Kind of understanding the fact that what the homeless lead with is intimidation. Yes. You can't politely ask somebody to leave, and you certainly don't want to do that. But loud noises, bravado, that quickly is trying to assess who you're dealing with. And if they cave to you, okay. You don't know what that guy was doing in there, but most likely was sleeping. Right. And you messing with that woke him up. Well, it makes sense, right? So, plus, you might have scared the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere, something's messing with your tent and you didn't notice? Probably would scare me, right? Yeah. So, are you just leaving the area? You're going to get, get down a ways, you know, climb up the embankment and kind of sit and chill and see who comes out and move on? Or what are you going to do? I was thinking, uh, yeah, I was thinking actually the ladder. Just uh, try and... Follow that uh, that area. Stay within the area, but go somewhere else. Find a good vantage point 
and see if I can find, if I can observe anything coming in or out of that location. All right, so you're trying to get a better vantage point on the situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, at this point, what are we asserting? Now, I'm trying to get your logic here. Your golden agenda is just to mess with the tent and then to mess with the grate. I'm not seeing a logic here. So you're looking for dogs. I'm trying. Yeah. Um, okay. Would I know of any other way to get into the other underground within the park area? Or would I have to go several blocks away towards that other location? I had to point this out to you. I mean, you are an Osferatu. Right. I mean, right? That comes with a certain... <laughs> More than Asratu known for. Comes with a certain knowledge, yeah. Right, like I'll go. I'll go where I know would be the closest entry point to get underground. Okay, so part of knowing where to go to get underground is just a matter of knowing what businesses are currently unoccupied, so nobody noticed you doing it. Right, that's kind of the idea of how you want to do this anyway. What the problem is here is that. In the course of you investigating or looking to investigate a situation like this, getting underground isn't simply finding a lid, removing the lid, and dropping down. A lot of folks think it's a trash can lid that stops you from going down. But have you seen a sewer lid in the city? Can you recall it? They are huge, if I recall. Well, not only are they heavy, they're, they're bolted. Oh, right. Someone comes along, keeps them bolted, you need a key for it or some sort of tool to open it, and not all of them. But we're talking, it's you're trying to manage a way to do it. And so you realize you need a key or a system. Typically, as a NOS player, we hand wave it. You have a way to do with it, you have poets, and you can figure out. But I've noticed, you're not exactly the strongest person. So it becomes a matter of how are you going to open a serial to get down in there? Hmm. Well, my immediate thought is if I know of any locations that would have like a sanitation uh, office, sneaking into that building and trying to find the proper tool. Now, that's not that's something to work with, right? Uh, you're falling back in connection saying if I have it, I have it. If I don't, I don't, right? Um, so right. what I need you to do here, we're going to rely on a simple skill set to see if you even have that set up. And uh, let's see, looking at your herd, it's not going to work, right? That's, that's a little no. different. Um, you are a sect war vet, though. That could help you figure out a thing or two. And there is one. I could give you that. And it's up to you. You do know that there's an FBI building that's downtown, and most likely that will connect over. Um, that uh, FBI building housing, what you know to be first light. Right. There's a way to mess with that. It would be a two birds with one stone scenario. Not only would I get access. But However, hold on. Pump breaks. Hold on. What else is on your sheet? What else is on my sheet is I know the labyrinth. Exactly. Thank you, sir, for picking that up. Right. There's one more thing. Where's your haven? Uh, it's underground. Yeah. But what is your haven? It's a abandoned uh, railroad train or subway train. So where do you think they keep those? Underground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. Right. You don't need anybody to tell you to get underground. You make it your business to sleep underground. And therefore, you know where access is if you can't get in here. How far is it from here? Well, that depends on where you have it. Now, for an abandoned rail system, that is the old parts of Chicago, which is near old Chicago. That is somewhere like downtown. You already knew where one part is because you had to go down there to meet Waneka, if you recall. Right. And so you did that. Okay. But that it does take you away from the park. But in terms of finding your way in, okay, well, that's a little different. It's going to take some time, but you can get over there. But at this point, this is all moot because typically when you want to make shuffles like that, right at this point, you're going, look at it this way. You're going three miles in to go down, to spend your time, to walk three miles back to figure out what exactly. What's in that tunnel? You're looking for disease dogs and tunnels. Um, but you know what you haven't done? 
I haven't, uh, I haven't even tapped into the homeless network. Well, what I'm pointing out is, um, Mr. Michelli, what, what, what does rot do to get these animals? Animalism. Uh, I haven't even attempted to commute with the beasts to like, get an idea where they would be. You've done nothing, <laughs> right? Even remotely yeah. that way. Is it bad? A little bit. Because it shows a disconnect, right? It's, um, it's a thing, right? So... What I'm referring to is, is that, all right, we know that you want to get down and you want to find something, but now your sheet, you yourself just went through with me a cavalcade of ways that one can do that. The underground is no mystery to you, nor is it how to get there, nor do you even have to be the one to do all this. But we do know that you are tiptoeing around the fact, are you looking for werewolves or are you looking for dogs? Shoot, are they one of the same though? I don't know, right? That's what I'm asking you. What would Rot think? You looking for werewolves? You looking for dogs? Are you looking for the guy that he lost that went missing in some weird forest that you're not finding in Millennium Park? What was that? I said I'm looking for the guy. Ultimately. Well, if you're ultimately looking for the guy, we know he's not underground in a sewer somewhere. Right. No. So. If he, the, the forests are not nearly dense enough to be for, uh, for him to be here. And as far as I'm aware, there's nothing near like that in the Chicago area. You'd have to be outside of Chicago. I mean, most, most okay. likely. So what I'm saying is here is Rot, barring a Hail Mary or having something to do, um, what are we going to do here? Being in the park, seeing this over here, having an encounter with someone who's pissed off you near their tent, you're kind of sitting around. What you want to do? Now, at this point, my dear player, I don't meet for no reason. I set up because there is some validity. You did know you encountered some sort of dog things out here. You also And you tracked them yourself. You do know they're in Millennium Park, so that's... Tick that down. Someone said there are werewolves in Millennium Park. Let's tick that too. But are you trying to say that because you didn't see these dogs become anything, you don't think they're one and the same? Intelligent hounds that seem diseased, mysteriously existing in a pack that operated way differently? Mm-hmm. Right? Do you remember when you saw them? Yeah, they, they, they behaved almost human-like. When you saw them? When did you see them? When I, I saw them when we were near the bean. And when we were trying to interact with it, they were laughing almost. Is that interesting? When you were interacting with it, what does that mean? What did you do? Tried to reach into the beam. Oh, don't tell me. I got to try and reach back into the beam to try. (laughs) What I'm trying to do is get you, the player, to trace events. It's been a while, right? Yeah. You've been a while, but the last, you were there for that event. What was the big significant thing? Why? What happened when you guys were the interact with the bean? What did they do? They frenzied. There, there was a riot. Yeah. Right. And if there was a riot, and you know that's what went on, and that's what happened, then look, look again at the dogs that you were looking for. Look back in your mind's audio eye. For a second. Say it again. I said your audio went. Completely different, so I, I missed some of that. Okay. Think back. Can you hear me clear now? Yes. Okay. Think back in your mind's eye to when you were there, as the, as, as Rot was there, he stood there, and you were looking at the dogs, and you said they were laughing. That's what you said. Right. Okay, that was unusual. And then you guys started frenzying. Everybody was frenzying, though, right? Yes. We all participated. Nobody's hands were unclean, no things. Nobody left hungry. To this little event. Right. I want you to think about it. Are you looking for dogs? Or are you looking for werewolves? I think I'm looking. I, I, I would assume I'm looking for werewolves. Okay. I think Rot would make that assumption too. What does Rot know about werewolves? Next to nothing. Okay. Which means that's where the investigation starts. Are you looking for werewolves? 
Or are you looking for a lost human? I know this much. If I'm looking for somebody's buddy that said they were lost in a forest and it's in Millennium Park and we've seen all sorts of photos of Millennium Park, I guess it depends on what someone classifies as a forest. But you can see that where there's park, it's along pathways, and they try to do like a barrier against the city to make it seem like on the inside is this great forest gladed area that is separated from the concrete jungle. Right in parts you can see water, and that's like there. And people say, "Oh, it must be the lake." And anybody with a bone in their head will go, "Well, maybe not quite, not from Millennium Park." But I mean, you can see the lake at parts. But you know, you get that idea. What is it that they're really driving towards? Millennium Park is an experience unto itself. But when you ha have that added piece, okay, there's a lot of madness being thrown around. This guy went missing. He, someone said that it was a. Uh, well, hell, I wonder who talked to that guy. And so you're left with two choices. Either you're vetting the people he talked to somehow, which means you're right. beating the feet of the investigation of the word of mouth to confirm, hey, have you seen this guy? And you're doing it sans photos. Last I checked, he kept that stuff. He did. So there's that on one end. It becomes a harder thing to do. But you may have the connections. I don't know. We'll leave that to you to decide. On the other thing, you're looking for werewolves directly, which if you're looking for werewolves... In this park, how'd you find them before? Um, I went uh, searching around the perimeter, and I saw them just at the edge of the tree line. Now, I don't know about you, spots no dope. What I mean by that is... Even Spot the Dog can pick, pick out every day of the week, one plus one bone plus one bone, bone equals two bones. Right. Right? So let's think. Some guy said this dude was lost in a place that had a lot of trees. All right. Depending on what this guy was on, I guess we can overlook that. But right. do you see anywhere in the photos of Millennium Park that I've provided for you that there could be a place that would fit that description is that, oh, man, there were a lot of trees? Potentially. Okay, so that doesn't help you, though, because there's a lot of places where they have, okay, you put some trees to represent what's going on, but hardly a forest. No. Right? Okay, so let's, let's, let's check that box. Um, who said it? I can't remember, just... Right. I was... He told you there was a guy, I'm going to fill you in this much, because I do remember this. He told you there was a pretzel vendor. Pretzel and, and... vendor and the, the demon dog vendor. Right, I said at the beginning, but you got a pretzel vendor, right? There is a pretzel vendor at the park right now where you're at, and guess what they're doing? Selling pretzels. Selling pretzels. Nothing to it. What are the odds that something magical has occurred and they suddenly had a break in the case that they're not looking for? But Low. at least you're in the right place, right? But I'm going to tell you something mm -hmm. further that I'll give you off the bat that your character can put together. Looking at the pretzel stand, seeing the Millennium Bean and where, where, where it's kind of located, um, you're looking for what exactly? Now, to fill this blank in, and if you can put all the stuff together here, all this was the effort to get the player in the right mindset to decide what to do, right? I needed to paint that picture so you know, here's where Rot is. Barring any sudden lightning striking the brain, I'm trying to also show you how you might investigate something. Right. Right? So at this point... Just so we can see what info I'm giving you, you need to make an intelligence and an investigation roll. And include hunger, which is. Oh, no special. Just roll. All right. What you can surmise is, look at one bone plus one bone. We got two bones now. There's the pretzel stand. There's the bean. Nearest cop of trees is well, right there, just beyond the bean. Mm -hmm. So that's the direction. But what did they say about the trees? And it was a thick forest. Sure, right. but what was the significance of the trees? Like, why is that such a big thing? I don't follow. Me neither. Because that's what you told me. That's the hope you got on. You said that his right. buddy, somewhere near a forest of trees that doesn't exist in Millennium Park. 
But is that what you're finding? No. What are you finding? Finding a facade of some form of nature in an urban jungle. So what we're pointing out is, is that you are here based on some half-ass info that he gave you from someone who was, you assume, is going to follow up, but you're here to try to do that for him. But you getting here, which is easy enough to do, and you're here now, you're like over by the bean. You're over by the pretzel stand. You look back to see where there are some trees. And is, is this what we're talking about? Okay, so you believe you found the trees. I'm going to agree with you that that must be where, where this was, whatever took place. But what are they saying took place? Saying... He just he the, he was saying that he was lost. All right, so he walked through those trees and he was lost in this forest. That's what it seems you're saying. If that's the yeah. case, all right. How would he get lost in those trees? And do you think it's possible to get lost in those trees? No, I don't. Right, it doesn't seem thick enough. But standing out here talking about to- uh, a pretzel stand to do that. Here's the difficult part that I'm trying to get you to is understand is investigation's not easy. It never is, especially with little info. And welcome to what it feels like to be in a cold case, right? As an Osferati, you're expected to pull miracles and stuff out of nowhere and, and to fill in the blanks. But he didn't fill in the blanks, right? No. Now, you can go back and tell your buddy, hey, man, I went there to the trees. I looked and I didn't see anything. I don't, I don't know what you were looking for. I don't know if something happened to him, but I didn't see any signs of blood stain, nothing like that. I didn't see any foul play or whatever. And you can go back, turn out your pockets and go, man, found nothing. Or you can lie. Do you get why you might do that? show well <laughs> first to show that i put some effort towards it second to mislead well i could i could accept those first two um but i'm also going to add for you there's an insight you're supposed to prove your worth to this group right that your your weight your weight is pulled here in this organization right now and right now you feel your weight is pulled best of being an investigator into the theory However, are you the expert werewolf hunter? No. Okay. Are you the guy who, out of nowhere, has claimed that you're like Sherlock Holmes, give me a little evidence, I'm going to find whatever I can, and I'm going to find what you were looking for, and the problem, and solve it? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then, are we at the limit of your investigation, or do you have something else you might do here? Now, to go back to the lie point, some unscrupulous people would just go back and say, yeah, I went there, I didn't find anything. I mean, there's nothing. I checked high, I checked low, I checked every tree, I checked all around. There's nothing there. You won't find nothing either. Now, I, right. I, I could be a jerk and tell you why you might do that, and that's just to keep you as a solid source of info. Yes. Because I would be given the in- perception that I'm the one who has all the knowledge you're looking for, and you're never going to find it there. Sure. Almost as if this is going to be a total waste of my time when I could be benefiting the group in another means. I myself am not saying it's a waste of time. But it doesn't feel that Rot would be able to put the pieces together to do something different than what we've discussed. And I feel that very much fits Rot. But if the player would like to pull something out and say, no, I'm going to do this. I think I could use this to figure this out. I think this would lead to that. I'm leaving it full on a table for you to do that or for you to ask a role to do so if you're still looking to do something. I'd like to at least try a Hail Mary approach to it. What? Could I use potentially maybe an, uh, some form of, I don't know, survival or streetwise to throw a dart at the board completely blind and see if I hit it? I will if you can answer an argument for either one of them. What I mean by is logic that I could follow. Why are you using survival? Why are you using streetwise? 
Mm, maybe not so much streetwise, because streetwise would be how the streets operate in this scenario. And the streets don't have anything to do with it. Neither does survival necessarily, because it's not exactly not exactly a survival sense. It's I'm tracking something. Well, I would I would argue that tracking something is a function of survival at a certain point, but right now you don't feel you have enough to go on. No, I don't. I'm, I'm seeing absolutely no signs of somebody being here previously, at least somebody when it comes to foul play or being taken. Okay, so what do we know? What I could say, and I'm going to give you what I've been beating around the bush at, you are not a gangrel. Yeah. Even if you were, Ganger would be hard-pressed to find anything, because you just don't have enough, right? Again, we're back to this whole point, investigation, is this a dead duck? What I'm looking for, what I'm trying to urge you to, is I've been trying to teach you that just because you say, as a player, I want to go handle something, doesn't mean you can handle it. It means you're going to go give it a try. But how are you going to go give it a try? That's the important thing. You would have thought to go do this. How is that going to work? And you might have expected something to occur out of a hat, and most STs would give it to you. I'm not going to just give it to you. But I will exhaust why you thought you could do it. And if you're telling me that Streetwise wouldn't help because that's not a method he's willing to try, and you're telling me survival wouldn't help because you just don't see how survival has anything to do with it, I'm not going to correct you as a storyteller. What I asked for, what is Rot's logic behind trying Streetwise or trying survival? And what you're telling me is is that you don't have an idea as to how he would use it. You don't have to tell me exactly how it would work. I was saying, you as a player, why do you think those two are relevant? Why I think those two are relevant in this case is because, well, again, the Streetwise would be able to tell me how do things work in this kind of a scenario. Survival allows me to track and uh, be able to essentially survive in a difficult situation. What oh. tools do I have at my knowledge and my skills disposal to survive difficult encounters or okay. encounters? Okay. So which one would you like to use? Would you like to go your streetwise method or would you like to go your survival I'll use survival. All right. So you're looking for your perception, excuse me, intelligence, and your survival. I'm going to give you a bonus if you have it. Let me check before I say it, though. You let me know if I have it. Yeah. You can add one dot, one dot from your insight. You can add that directly to the roll. Okay. One dot from insight. Plus my hunger. Three successes. With three successes and your vast knowledge of at least... Being on the street and figuring out this spot. You figure out a couple of things. Number one, with the evidence given, this guy talked about pretzel stand. We've been over that. We've been over the trees. And you go to the trees directly. You stop talking about it. You walk over to them. And as you're in them, you realize they are thick enough. And they do look similar enough that if you were walking through here, you still can be lost. It's hard pressed for you to see it. There's a little bit of trash in the ground because they haven't done the routine rounds. Probably done by week or by daily. Excuse me, every other day I should say. It's probably what humans say. And every other day they come through, they pick up the trash, they throw it away because they want to keep it well manicured even in the winter. You're out here now though, and it hits you like a hammer on the head. You're you're out here looking for somebody. However, an event that would have happened might have happened, but they clean this all the time. And then as you're looking at the trash can and you're looking at the, the side of it, it gives you the building and the company that handles the cleanup job for this place. Right? Like, you suddenly feel like Sherlock Holmes. This company comes out here, this ace cleanup uh, for the city of Chicago comes out here, and they take care of all the trash cans. They clean them all, pick them up, dump them. Come out here, pick them up, and dump them. And what's interesting is, you know what's over here near this cusp of trees? One of these trash cans. Now, I'm not saying it's the end-all be-all, but at least it's a, it's a potential hope of a lead that there might be somebody who saw something odd here that, that was there that wouldn't mention They wouldn't have mentioned it to anybody out here for the homeless. They'd mention it amongst co-workers. Now it's a matter of pinpointing who was on that shift, right, if to go that route. But over here, all you find is that there's a nice little place to sit on a bench and there's something to throw away the refuse and trash you might have while you're here. But that company sticks out like a sore thumb. And, and one further, they do give a number, but that, that you know is most likely to the city of Chicago to complain. 
that's on the on the thing too. Maybe it's worth calling. But that's a lead if you want it. But that is about the culmination of what you can get standing over here. Was it's not going to be the homeless who are randomly going to notice something. And quite frankly, you know there are three weird dogs that look like homeless people. One calls of Doctor Pigeon that were revealed to be werewolves. Right. We kind of don't want to encounter them on our own. Yeah. But this is different. You're real muted. Are you talking away from the mic? Oh, sorry. I was leaning away from the mic. Yeah. So if I were to make this phone call, I'm thinking, how would I, in, how would I get a serious answer without a, a hang up from somebody who's ex, who's thinking I'm prank calling? Now, what I'll tell you here is that this is where your character has no idea. Um, we, we point to the assets that Rot does have. Rot has a one for charisma. Yeah. Right? He has a dysfunction with how to maintain that, you know, first encounter. How would I talk to anybody to get them to open up? Let's just say he's a little bit you rang when it comes to how he handles stuff, right? <laughs> um, he's normal across the board everywhere else and means no harm, but he's a little, little difficult in handling. Doesn't mean you don't have a hope in hell. Just means I, the ST, can't give you an idea based on that. Right. My options are I either just bring back this information alone or try to find a little bit more to add to my use, we'll say. Looking at my sheet right now, trying to see if I have any other tools at my expense. Uh, at my disposal that would help me with this new uh, found knowledge. Um, like you said, my charisma is weak, and I don't really have any other social skills that could give me any sort of an edge. All right. But could I perhaps do a online search to see if they have a office nearby, or maybe see if there, are, if I can uh, notice any of these ace uh, cleanup employees nearby. So, let's do some logic right again. We're always gonna do that. We're gonna come back to that logic set. The difficulty playing Nosferatu is that you're not good at talking to people, and you're really not good at talking to people. So even if there was an employee nearby, what exactly, how would you open that, right? <laughs> And so yeah. we're going to kind of cross off the list, too. But you're not a guy who knows things based on being seen. You're a guy who knows things based on going. Right? That's sort of your deal. Your whole shtick is that I'm unseen, you can't see me, and I'm checking stuff out. And so it's a lot of you having hands on. Unless you have technically other means to look at stuff, don't you? Or do you? Mm -hmm. I have an awareness to myself. Uh, I've got pretty decent observation skills, but nothing really when it comes to interaction. Animal can, perhaps. Immune with the animals like we were discussing earlier. So I'm going to tell you a flaw, a big pet peeve I have with some people play V5, right? And here's what I'm going to tell you. So my pet peeve with you, and it's, it's, it's interesting, it's a bone to pick. Why the hell would I make an in-depth concept and take a whole bunch of points on lore sheets and I'm never going to look to see how they benefit me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, right? You know what I mean? Like, what's the point of having them if they don't affect the concept, which is why I'm against lore sheets? Because they take that off. Like, they're not even helping you at this point. They're just there. Many players. That's what happens with them. They were a cool thing that would matter if we were playing Bloodline something. And, you know, it kicked in and your background means you get an extra blood point or an automatic detection on some other nonsense. But they do way more than what you're giving them credit for. Right. For example, this uh, here, I can't really use my uh, contacts right now. Those burnt bridges have kind of been burnt. However... Looking at Tech War Vet. That could be information about werewolves. Probably not. No, because the Sect War Vet's referring to Camarilla versus Sabat, right? 
So on, on those two sides of the fence, how they function, we're not referring to that, but you have others. Wait a minute. Herd migrating, feeding off those who lose their way in the city or believe, or who Grant would believe won't be missed. If he were to approach this scenario as a hunter instead, a predator, and he is looking for his prey right now, where would uh, Rot typically find something to eat? Well, here's the funny thing. Rot's invisible. Anywhere works. Anywhere where it's inopportune moment for your prey. Right? That's what you would do. You target people that won't be missed. That means that you spend your time to make sure nobody's going to miss this lady for not making it home. Or nobody's going to miss this old man for not getting in the car. No one's going to miss this uh, this athlete who just got done at a hard night's lifting and she's been watching through the gym uh, window on the outside to make sure he's nice and exhausted when you choose to jump in and grab him. Basically, people at their weak points. And, and that's thinking as a predator. Get them when they're not ready for it. That's the That's the whole crux of the idea of feeding anyway. However... You could try going that method, but it scraps the progress you have so far. Right now, you know where, you, where most likely you can look at. That's the thing I'm getting at. Right? If you uncover that there's some waste removal place that the park that handles the park, and you know what they are, and you got their number, and you have a thing called internet, and you know where they're at, and you have that yeah. info, I didn't contest it. Um, my dude, you have lore sheets that give you... What does Winneka's lore sheet give you? Uh, having It gives me spy paths. Having worked as a spy for Winneka, he knows paths that would uh, that he could take that he may be able to use to spy on others. Okay, sounds kind of useful, don't it? Yeah. Right. If you wanted to get in, are nearby. If you want to get into a building, right? Does does this on the network? Does he know how to do it? Is that there? That's that's a good question. Um, the other one half is that you have a way to navigate the underground because you live in the underground. In the underground. No one ever needs see you to get to where you got to go. And most buildings, why would they be held? You not there. So using that knowledge, what would Rot know as the closest uh, path to use to get into this underground network that could potentially be the route that... Uh, Ramsey's friend was taken. Because we're doing a method now that annoys me, right? I hate this tit for tat that typically is done in fantasy games where it's like, I'm going to ask you a question, make a die roll. How are you going to get there? Make a die roll. It's a waste of fucking time. Would you agree? Right. Right. We yeah. know where you want to yeah, go. No. What we're trying to do is we're going to figure out why would Rock go there on his own? That's a good point. He knows what is likely the best route to be taking right now. And no, now his job no, 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 no. Hear me. Yeah. Hear me. Hear me out. Yes. Right? Ramsey had somebody go missing. Okay. And you think they were abducted by werewolves. You already did the dumb thing. Yeah. You came to the place to sit around and look for, oh, I don't see werewolves. But now you go, wait a second, a little investigation. And you have a win in that investigation column. Actually, you did it. You utilize your character to figure out, okay, there's a company that oversees this park. And they handle the waste removal. And based on what your guy said... I think I know where your guy is. However, I didn't see any werewolves in that park. What are the odds they're with this waste management company, Mr. Michelli? Uh, Be rot for a second. There's a waste management company. A company built to get rid of waste. If they want to hide a body, they can hide a fucking body. Yeah. If they want to get rid of messes, they can get rid of messes. You're telling me that your character rot wouldn't be able to put two and two together? To figure that out? He most definitely would. Right. And it becomes a risk assessment. Now, you could be completely wrong. You could be taking people there, and there's nothing there at all. It could be completely mundane, but now, welcome to the hell of an Osferatu. Is this valid info? Is it not valid info? But you're a guy who goes and learns by himself by doing. A so-called scout. It's either you're going to go there, scout, see what you can see, and hope you don't get detected, or you're going to say, F that, I got people, I'm going to go back and tell them and see what they think. But you gave an actual direct lead that Bumblefuck Ramsey wasn't ever going to figure out. 
I only say that because basically Ramsey's like, did you find blood? Yeah, where was it? Heading due east, well, then where answer's east. And he would just walk until he found most likely where it is, i.e. relying on blind luck, right, right. To, to run into it. You came out here and did deductive reasoning, assessed the logic of what the lay of the land is here, and got at least a lead, but you realize you're not that good at talking. No. So if that's Careful. the case and you're going to sneak around this place... Well, the hope is you would have somebody who would have a better luck infiltrating by speaking. And do you know of anybody out of your group that's good at speaking? Yeah, I know one. I do know one. He is not here right now. <laughs> right. Like, I'll make this his problem to help with. You got it. And that's and that's where we're at. And that's why I'm giving you two XP for this scene is we're at a, we're at a dead duck door. But it's because I'm trying to teach you trying to get you to learn something here as well you could have told me screw that bob i'm going there because i need to go because my character does know that but i have some heartfelt and passion reason why i got to come back with a win right. you were you were about to lie and you slipped the noose of the bait i tried to give you there lying would have overcomplicated it but you, hey you might have been that nosferatu i've been there if you couldn't find anything lie that you did and make them pay more and give you more time to actually look to get it mm-hmm that, that's a method one could use. You didn't do it. You stuck to nobility there. And so the integrity sound, which means when you go back to tell them, hey, I have an idea. I know where it might be. I need you to go figure it out, though, with me. That's teamwork. That's utilizing your assets. And that's what I wanted you to get out of the scene today. It's not that I knew how it would end. I promise you. You could still say, F it. Let's go to waste management now. I'm prepped for that. But I wanted you to hear it first, to hear the logic and where you got to and what it is and how that might be maybe not so wise to your character. Or no. you're deciding F it. No, no guts, no glory. Well, that does sound intriguing and not, but I, the, the lesson I'm going to take from here is know how your character approaches the situation. Know, know your lore sheet. Know your entire character sheet. And how do you use those tools to assess the situation, handle the situation, and know where is the extent of you as the player wanting to see the end result? But would your character do that? And in which case, I know for a fact, Rot would scout, figure out what he can deal with. At this point, he knows that it's become social skills that are going to get him further. He doesn't have those. So his job is to report back and present them with the new information move ahead with the team. Okay. Which also plays to what we had agreed on from the very beginning with this chronicle, what they do, what the pack agrees to, they do together. Sounds great. Um, I won't add anything because I also don't want to hear it again. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're very good at telling me, hey, this is what I got. This is exactly what you said. We're golden there. We'll learn progress one day. Um, but the <laughs> but the simple fact that I tease with that, it happens, right? Um, yeah. With that being what it is, the second part of what you wanted to do on your own. Mm-hmm. I wanted to investigate the nictitude uh, the nituku. The, the, my God, I can't say that word right now. Nituku. Okay. That was, I suspect, abducting children near that mall. So now I'm going to go back out to that gurney place on your own, and you want to investigate that mall looking for nictuku. That also sounds like. Terrible idea. I, as a Nosferatu um, alone, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Yeah, I've uh, read a couple of novels and included these, and I'm pretty sure he's Rot would have heard the Boogeyman stories told in the uh, sewers in the Warrens, and I think he would not venture into that if he knows damn well that that is what it is. He's going to go with everybody. All right, then I think that concludes what we're doing here. As you realize, you got two things you want to do. One was progress that nobody had before. Well done. And the other one is, we'll call that common sense. Sounds good to me. All right. That effect, good job, man. That concludes this little side adventure, and we'll check everyone later. With Phoenix Crusade continues. Thank you for listening to our 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade podcast. If you like what you heard and want to support us, please share it with others or leave a review. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.